Okay, okay. Aztecs. Mm-hmm. Sixth episode. We've just left Marinus. We're no longer on a space, mm-hmm. but now we are in history. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's what's going on in the Aztecs, dear? Um, Aztec things mostly. Um, I okay, cool podcast. All over. right, cool, done. All right, see you next week. See you next week. Play us out. Sensor rights next week. All right, play us out. Let's go. I'm, I'm not done. Come on. Okay. Bits over. Well, Back to work. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, I <laughs> kind of forgot the first episode's name already, so it's whatever. We're both very tired. The Temple of Evil. Of Evil. Um, we we start on Evil. the mini- miniature TARDIS leaving Marinus. Um, Adorable miniature. Uh-huh. And we open up to a very, like, mosaic skull on a table, and it's just, like, not Aztec at all. I mean, it, it tried, it tried, but it was, like, glittery glass, and I was just like, mm-hmm, okay. Um, and Susan is excited that they're on Earth, and Barbara seems to know exactly where everything is from for some reason. And okay, she's a school teacher. But to know literally every single thing about the Aztecs as a school teacher, like it, it seemed it would have been more interesting if they're like, yeah, no, she went like to college for this and did like historical studies. But I guess this is I mean, the sixties. Uh huh. So <laughs> Barbara knows where everything's from, and she just picks up this this literal dead person's bracelet and just puts it on. Like, without even well, thinking she... about it. Like, let's... That, that's the wife and her speaking. She's like, oh, this person Ooh. will not need it any longer. It Ooh. is mine now. Ooh. As a British, I shall claim it Ooh. for the good of the Empire. Good of the Empire. Um, so, the she keeps talking about how, like, the Aztecs are both good as well as evil, and everyone in the crew is like, no, they were they were fucked up. Like... They were fucked up. She's like, no, they were good, too. And, like, no one wants to plead her. Um, Susan sees some cartoons on the wall, and then the wall just lifts up all spooky, and they just exit the tomb. Um, they, they move farther into the very obvious, like, temple area, and then someone felt, finds them, and he yells, woman, and... The place is apparently because the place is apparently sacred and she's not supposed to be there, so she has to be pu- punished. And for whatever reason, the camera just can't focus on her at all. It it happens quite a lot actually in this episode that the camera can't seem to focus on what it's supposed to. It's mm, it's a lot. Um, he notices yep. the bracelet on her arm. But then just we move straight back to everybody else. And they're mad that Barbara just went off her on her own. Like, it doesn't delve into anything about the bracelet. They're just like, that's a bracelet. Anyway, this is what the doctor's doing. Well, it's meant to be a dramatic cutaway of like, (gasps) she's in trouble. (gasps) Ooh, what's this bracelet? Oh, okay, we'll find out in a bit. Uh Uh-huh. Oh, come on. I would rather there have been just like a, why do you have that sort of thing? Or something like that. Um, so it's meant to be a dramatic vice. I know to be it's like, supposed to be dramatic. What happened to Barbara? I, I am allowed to be. To I am allowed to be salty about this. Stop! It was a more politics. That's what you're salty about. It was a politics episode. I am allowed to be salty. Dear, D- Doctor Who is like bathed in politics. Well, not this. That's not what I mean when I say politics. I mean like one side versus the other side, and that's it. A political struggle. Yes. Caveman politics again. Cave. Okay. Wow. Okay. Uh huh. So they see a Mayan city out in the distance. They're like, "Huh, that's weird. This place is probably deserted. It's fine." And then the door to the TARDIS, like where the TARDIS is, and the tomb closes behind them. And like, well, shit. Guess we can't get back in there. And it's a heavy door. The high priest comes in again, and he like is stumbling over his words. And the tomb is apparently sealed and they're not allowed to get back. And I am so sorry in advance. I was very scatterbrained during watching this and I didn't get a single person's name right. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. I'll I'll give you their names. I'm not going to remember them to keep talking through this, but go ahead. 
the friendly one is Ortlock. Potluck, yeah. I did call him Potluck throughout my notes. Okay. Uh, the one with the, the black line across his mm-hmm. mouth, the evil one. Mm-hmm. That's Latoxel. Mm-hmm. Ortoloxtol. There's many different ways of saying it because no one in the cast could decide <laughs> what to act- how to pronounce uh... it. Um, it's a case where the writer wrote it and I guess didn't think to uh, inform the cast or producer, like, hey, maybe they don't know how to pronounce these names. I should probably give them a heads up. Yeah. Um, they tended to gravitate towards Latoxel, though, with, like, yeah. the first T being signed. So I just named him Toxel throughout most of my, my notes, like the Pokemon, so. Yeah. I, I, I should, I, I feel like we should preface this in that, uh, I... Okay, if, if somehow you haven't listened to anything I've ever said about classic Doctor Who mm-hmm. and its relationship with race, mm. um, <clears throat> Doctor Who has a checkered past when it comes to uh, various different interpretations yeah. of. Are you saying uh, British people racism and colonialism? Are you saying British people well, could be racist? Okay, okay. Here's the thing. Doctor Who never, it never intentionally is racist. Yeah. It's always racist in the uh, casual racism or uh, white liberal racism or... Um, the the easiest way to explain it is there's a scene later on where Ian literally goes, we should side with that priest. He's more civilized. And I was just like, oh... Ooh, yes. okay. Yes. Ooh. It, 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 they, they, they don't fall into the trap. Of, it, they try to have Barbara fall into the trap this episode yeah, of, they do. Uh, of, uh, of, of saying, oh, these people are uncivilized. I can save them. I, yeah. can, I can teach them the proper ways. But the episode kind of, it, it doesn't do it perfectly because it's made in the 60s. Uh-huh. If it was made in the 70s or 80s or now, it would be done a lot better but because it was made in the 60s when they themselves hadn't fully decided like how they wanted to how how the past should be acknowledged and everything uh it was a case of like uh we can't change the past uh they're not (sighs) this episode doesn't (laughs) It's hard to say because it's not inherently racist. It has a lot of uh, racial insensitivities. Put it and this way: it tried... they kind of they kind of imply that uh, human sacrifice is the reason that uh, the Spanish and Cortez uh, colonized mm-hmm. very impolitely. Very impolitely. Very impolitely. Mm. Um, they, 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 they kind of imply, like, oh, we can't do this because, like, the reason Barbara tries to change the civilization, she's like, oh, if I can change them, then they'll be ready for the Spanish, and, and the yeah. Spanish won't think of them so barbarous. And, and then they'll and survive. And slaughter them. Yeah. And they'll survive, but... That's not the re- reason the why this they were slaughtered, this... but okay. <laughs> I will say, this is how you know it was an English show, and not an <sighs> American show because at least they acknowledge that they were slaughtered. Yes, I mean they don't yeah. try and go. They magically disappeared when Cortez arrived. Yeah, yeah. I, c- I can just the, or the mm, think of all the, the shows the, that the did savages that. Savages fought them. Oh, and lost. Yeah, mm. which is cough, cough, kind of what. Australia's done with our past. Yeah. That's another story. Uh-huh. Anyway, let's continue with the story now that we've sort of included the I preface mean, I, of how I will racially say, insensitive this episode is. I will say, nothing in this episode actually felt costumey or, like, out of place. Well, that's... Okay, That that's the thing. Um, I'll get to it when we finish the first episode yeah. and I'll give you some backstory and stuff. But uh, a little thing is, Deer and I threw out all of it. I couldn't remember if any of the actors were, were sort of wearing brown face for this were, were sort of we were, we, up we're continuing to try and, and figure it out i i sort of i i had it in my mind of i i'm 90 percent sure none of them were but you couldn't tell because the quality is not the best and the lighting is so inconsistent it's like i can't tell um 
we've looked at some colorized photos and we're 99% sure none of them are wearing uh, brown makeup. I think it's maybe they went wrong. to go get a tan, but that was about it. Yeah, maybe a, a very, very slight tan, but it, it feels like it wasn't part of the yeah. makeup, per se. They, they didn't forcefully like, oh, make oh, them... Oh, they're the Aztecs, they need yeah. to be brown. Yeah, they, they didn't do that, thank um, God. And thank God uh, they were too... I don't know if it's too lazy or too smart to give them accents. Mm. Um, Doctor Who, I mean, they kind of joke about it in the new season, uh, where it's like, how come they all speak English? It's because like, we can translate uh, it through the TARDIS, whatever, whatever. And it's like, yeah, huh? <laughs> sure. They never, I, I can't remember where they first explained that in classic Doctor Who, but it's like, they never fully explain it until someone asks, and then they're like, oh yeah, why, why, ha like, we've been all over the galaxy, like, universe and time, how come... Like, these people can speak English. It's like, uh, we didn't think about it because we didn't think anyone would care. Um, <laughs> oh, they cared. I mean, the excuse they come up with is good. Anyway, continue the episode and so then I'll give you some interesting They backstory. walk all of ten feet, see another person who's creepy, and it's Toxel. And they call him the local butcher. And they apparently talk about how it's going to rain when the sun touches the west and they're going to sacrifice someone or Susan to bring the rain to appease the rain god. And there's more political struggle between the two high priests, and I'm just like, mm-hmm, this just feels like a, a lot of things. Um, and I will say this episode felt like it was going a lot faster, or maybe I was just really tired. It felt like a lot faster than normal. No. I was having trouble writing very, notes. This is a very high-quality, high-production-value episode. Mm -hmm. um, like, look at a previous episode, like The Edge of Destruction, where not really much happens yeah. at all. Whereas this one, it's like every scene, something happens. There's subplots. Yeah. There's, there's so many different characters. There's different allegiances. There's, there's lots of little things going on. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's constantly interesting. It's not like a minute where you're going, okay, I'm kind of bored. Nothing's happening. It's like, no, there's still always something happening. Yeah. Um, this is, it's, it's part of the reason why this episode is uh, one of the most popular Mm. Uh, first Doctor episodes, that and the production value. Well, because it picked up a but chip. We'll get to that. Um, so we cut back well, to... Okay, mm. fine. Well, they pick. we cut back to the companions, and they're apparently all being treated well, and we find Barbara sitting in a chair and wearing so much Aztec garb she looks like a turkey. Um, oh, oh <laughs> she's apparently thought to be the reincarnation of a god slash a high priest. And... He thinks that the companions are the servants of Barbara. And for some reason during this inner like inner like conversation between everybody, there's this horrible cut to Susan's audio. And I don't know where it comes from. And it's just like, oh, you just cut that real quick. Yeah, speaking of like high quality, there is a moment where Susan's speaking and then she's kind of cut like immediately after a word. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, um, that was jarring. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's possible that happened because she was on holiday, but we'll get to that. <laughs> they worry that they think if they find out that Barbara is lying, that everyone is going to die. Uh, and two priests come forward and ask them that when the sun sets, will she appear in front of the people and be like, Oh my God, yo. And she's like, yeah, sure. Um, the her servants are allowed to do whatever they want, but Barbara makes Susan stick around her just for safety's sake, I guess, because women. Um, well, also remember, Susan is only fifteen years old. Uh huh. Look, it's hard to remember that she's fifteen when she's like thirty. Okay. Actually, I, I think she was like twenty two. Still, she she just looks a lot older than you expect her to be, and it's just like, okay, this is difficult to remember. She was twenty four. Oh. <laughs> so the doctor, at this point, oversteps his mark. Everyone freaks out a little bit, and they decide to just listen to the two priests for whatever reason. And Ian deci they decide that Ian is going to train their armies and the doctor is going to hang out in the garden. And that is his role. Um, yes. But he also now apparently has a rival to command some troops. They have to fight it out. 
And then we cut to a man wielding, I know what the weapon is, and they tried to recreate it, and they tried really hard, but it looked more like a cricket bat with some razor blades on it. Because of how short they, it was. <laughs> the point is that they tried, yes. and like it was, it's very clear that they tried to be as accurate as possible. Uh, let me... I'm trying to remember what that thing is called. Uh, Makahuri, maybe? We'll figure it. Yeah, the Obsidian Chainsaw, the Makahuri. Um, so... They... I, I mentioned that I was kind of getting tired of all these white people acting like they aren't white, but this episode was not the worst of it. And at this point is when we were kind of wondering if they were wearing brown face or not, and we weren't really sure. Yes. Because they... It, it's Doctor hard to Who tell. doesn't have many, many... In the classic series, Doctor Who doesn't have many... Um, uh, it doesn't have many characters that are non-white. Yeah. Um, which is why a lot of people say that Doctor Who is such a white show. It is, for a lot of reasons. Not just that. Um, which, trust me, we'll get into as this series goes ah. on. But, um, there are characters down the line where, like, it, it's part of a problem to do with, uh, the fact that they rarely do historical stuff after this. They do more historical stories, uh... Mainly in the first Doctor, but after the first Doctor, they kind of stopped doing historical stuff, like specific settings of like this is uh, uh, the French Revolution, this is uh, a, a key moment in history, um, and of the moments that they do go to, they are white history. So it's things like the Crusades, <sighs> things like uh, Rome, but white Rome, obviously. Obviously, the Romans were so white when. Yes, um, <laughs> and very straight. Oh, yes. Uh, so it, it's like, it kind of sidesteps the issue of of brown facing and casting white actors in non-white roles by just not having those characters. Yeah. But there's times where they do have characters that are not white, and... Uh, there's a whole heap of problems with that, but <laughs> thankfully that's not for another few years that we get to Toberman. Sorry, I had to um, smack anyway. my cat off my 3D printer. Um, anyway, finish the first episode. <laughs> so this guy's name is Ixa, I believe, and he's not... Ixta. He's not scared of Ian, and to prove it, he asks some random dude to come, o come over, and they kind of hop around each other a little bit, and Ian just, like... Er, Ixa, like, just fucking kills the guy and then smashes a shield just to be like, I'm not scared of you. And apparently we then cut to someone named Kanika? K Kanika? K Kameka. Okay, I was nowhere close. All right. Remember, because I kept making I kept making the, the Kokomo jokes. I am very tired. He kept saying, Kameka? Ooh, I want to take you? <laughs> to Bermuda, Bahama. Come on, British drama. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, you. So you she's butt. apparently very sought after because she's witty and she's pretty, and I don't fucking know. And the doctor is like, "Wow, they have all these water for these flowers, even though you're in the middle of the drought." And she's like, "Yeah, we'd rather die with the world being pretty around us than die of um, and, and then survive without it or something." And I'm like. Uh huh. Sure. Tell me that when you're not, when when you're actually dying. Um, and wow. there's going to be apparently a meeting with the doctor and someone, but we don't really know who it is because he wants to learn how to get into the 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 where the TARDIS is basically because the door won't open. Um. The very heavy door. <sighs> yes, the very, very heavy door. <laughs> Ian walks up and mentions that he has to escort the sacrifice victim to the altar, and the doctor's like, you need to let them die. Like, this is their religion and shit, just do it. Like, just go through with it, this is not our place to do anything, just do it. And he's like, alright, cool. And we see 
Barbara and Susan are hanging out and talking about the difference of the two priests. And Susan's like, wow, beauty and horror develop hand in hand. I'm just like, "Uh uh-huh. Susan, yeah. The doctor mentions to Barbara at that point that there's going to be a sacrifice and how she can't interfere. And Barbara decides because she's a god, she's going to stop them from ever sacrificing again. And You mean because she's white? Yes. The doctor <laughs> then gets mad about her rewriting history, and Barbara does this bit where she's like, I'm not Barbara. I'm y- whatever the name is. Y- 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 and I was just Yataxa like, is. uh-huh, sure, white it, lady. I mean, okay. Sure, white lady. It's not... It's He doesn't say not just the whole rewriting time, but he also is kind of... He, he kind of also goes like it's their culture like if this is if if they if human sacrifice is part of their culture we're gonna respect their beliefs we we're not here to change them yeah we're here like it's not just time travel as like uh you can't change it because you can't rewrite history but it's also like it's immoral yeah. to to basically come here and tell them how to live which, their lives which was kind of nice to hear and then that never comes back up the rest of the episode and i'm like okay um, I, again, like, if I know. that was made in the 70s or 80s, I can tell you that would be a th- follow-through through the entire episode. Yeah. Um, Especially with a few companions that would easily slip into that role yeah. of uh, Barbara. Uh, so we come out and we see this man on a stone, and Susan is being held by the doctor off-screen and told to not look. And they present Barbara to the crowd and everyone goes, yay! And then that's it. they go ahead and they start the human sacrifice and ian's like all right let's go through with this he holds the guy down and we zoom in on the priest but it's for some reason not focused in on him it focuses it past him slightly past barbara and she's like no we're not going to sacrifice anyone anymore and then the guy who was I'm going to be going sacrificed to... is like, you took my honor from me. Like, what the hell? So he just jumps off the building. And then it starts raining. Uh, so they demand to punish Susan for fucking up the ceremony because she had run in and been like, no, don't do it. Even though Barbara yeah. is the one that stopped it. And she's like, nah, like, I'm just going to, like not let this happen they're like no like you have to punish susan this is a thing she's defied you um she's like all right we'll take her down to like the woman hut where she has to learn to be like a bride or some shit and we'll deal with her later where that actress can go on holiday yes um and the stark sounds of lightning and thunder just like keep coming and coming and then we just cut to the next episode the warriors of death warriors of death, of death. Anyway. So, so, okay. This episode, immediately you notice production values kind of, not through the roof, but a lot better. Mm -hmm. And the sets are a lot better. Part of that is because Verity Lambert, the producer, and a whole heap of other allies that she had, essentially went to the BBC and went, look, we're a fucking leading show now. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want this to do better, you gotta give us better shit. Yeah. Like, we're currently filming in the shittest, smallest, worst studio on the lot. Like, you give us one of the good ones, okay? We and made they gave the it Daleks. To they gave it to us. Like, Except we made children run around the with egg beaters. The... Give it to us. Yeah. Except that by the end of the episode, they had to return to the shitty studio. Why? Um, Why? I don't fully know why I could find the article where it's spoken about and read it, but honestly, I, it doesn't really make matter. Yeah. Um, but okay. I'll, I'll bring up the writer and why this episode exists. Mm -hmm. So this was written by John Lucarotti, who also wrote Marco Polo, but we haven't watched that yet. So, oh, well, um, he also wrote another episode called the massacre of, uh, St. Uh, I'm, uh, god damn it, I'm blanking on the name. It's mainly just known as The Massacre, but it's like a full name. Mm-hmm. I'm going to beat myself up for not remembering it. Um, it's okay. Uh, so he basically was 
fascinated by Aztec civilization. He lived in Mexico for a while and he was like, holy shit, this like civilization is great. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he revered them. It wasn't from a position of, ooh, these savages were fascinating. Yeah. It was from a, a place of like, he really respected them. Mm-hmm. He really loved them. Yeah. Uh, he was particularly fascinated by their obsession with human sacrifice. Uh, so uh, when he was commissioned to writing the scripts and everything, uh, he basically wanted to write it as accurate as possible. Like, uh, write it as accurate to the civilization as he could. Write all the, the tools and costumes, everything as accurate yeah. as possible. Which is I why I was talking to... about the Makahutil? Makahutil? Ma- ma- yeah. The, I... the, the, cricket bat, the cricket bat that was actually really, like, <laughs> on point. Like, it... I remember seeing that because I like just look into weapons and things and that's something that interests me. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's actually like kind of close to what they were. Everything about this episode, they actually wanted to make it as close as possible. Whether it is accurate, I unfortunately don't know. There are probably areas that aren't completely accurate, but I, n- nowhere I can find anyone going... Hey, let's assess the accuracy of this episode because I know next to nothing about Aztec civilization, so I can't go. Actually, this is wrong. So, um, being... but from what I can tell, everyone, everyone I can see is saying it's as accurate as possible to within limits, of yes. course. So I can sit there and be like, yeah, like I've recognized this, I've recognized that because it's it's like one percent of Texas culture. Is, is somewhat Mayan and, and Spanish and Mexican and so on and so forth. So I get little glimpses of it. I don't know shit. Personally, I'm just a white person <laughs> living in Texas. But being like where I live, I get like glimpses of that sort of culture in the towns I live in. So like I could be like, yeah, like I've seen that before. Like that's not too far off. Like the the, the Jaguar hat was actually not terribly far off compared to what it would normally be instead of just like wearing a jaguar head on top of your head sort of thing like they did in like yeah. road to el dorado for example i mean i i think the biggest example for me and like the the most uh the bit that makes me go hey they actually really cared about accuracy with this is uh when the the sacri- the, the man who's meant to be sacrificed doesn't get sacrificed yeah like in a typical white story where they're like i don't understand this 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 barbaric culture. Oh. They would have been like, oh my god, thank you for saving me. Mm-hmm. But like, no, they go, you've robbed me of my honor. Like, I I was, I wanted to be sacrificed. Yeah. Like, that was my role. Like, I wanted this, and now you've stolen that from me. Ha <laughs> um, <laughs> ha, white people. Not the only, not the only <laughs> thing white people are going to steal from you, buddy. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, ho, ho, just oh, you ho. wait. Um, but yeah, it, that that's why I say this episode isn't inherently racist. It has it has missteps, but it was made in the fucking sixties. Of course, it's going to have missteps. Mm. This is probably as not racist as an episode about Aztec culture could have been in the sixties. Made in the sixties. Yeah. If it was made in the seventies, would have been a little bit less. A little bit. Made in the eighties. Made in the 80s, like, the late 80s, holy shit, it would have been great. It would have been, um, because, uh, spoilers, when we get to the late 80s, I'll talk about it more. But the late 80s is when the, the writers all changed, and the new writers that came in were essentially like, hey, we know Doctor Who has had, like, political undertones. We're just gonna, like, ramp those up a little bit and kind of make them a little bit more overt. I was gonna say, and then... Sort of, like... And then, like, in... Blatant messages of, uh, uh, of, uh, Margaret Thatcher's a bitch. Um, basically, like, stuff like that. Um, skirting the lines where they would get the BBC in trouble. <laughs> uh, so it's like, oh god, if this episode was made in the late 80s, holy shit. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, it, it, the, the writer clearly has a love for, uh, Aztec culture, and they wanted... They they really wanted to make this as as, as close as they could. Yeah. Um, I I believe the costume designer took some liberties. Yeah, uh, I was like, gonna say wasn't... like with Barbara's entire outfit. Like when I sit there and say she looked like a turkey, it's because it was like a hundred percent feathers. And 
I don't know how realistic an outfit entirely of feathers and jewelry is. So maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm maybe I'm totally wrong. I don't know. Like I, I believe I believe they made it as accurate as possible, but I think they made tiny changes here and there. I know there's a myth that like uh, actually the Aztecs only wore loincloths and they covered them up because of 1960s oh. standards of decency. Ooh. But that kind of been as debunked as by the costume designer herself, who was like, "No, what? No, I made that. Like I researched the shit out of this. Yeah. Like don't don't say that I didn't do my fucking job. Don't make me sound more racist. Like you're the one fucking up here. Stop it." Yeah, I, I mean, it would have been, I like, I would have taken back everything if they were just wearing loincloths. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Because that, that would show that they didn't give a shit. Mm-hmm. But no, they, 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 they actually went out of their way. Um, anyway, episode two, let's go. Now that we have this, this backing of, of understanding mm. how kind of not racist this, is. This headboard to the bed that Britain is laying down all of the countries they fuck over in. Got it. Um, so we... The sun never sets, do you? So we cut back into the priest, and he's literally just like, Nah, Barbara's fake, like, fuck that. Uh, why would she, the goddess of sacrifice, want to stop sacrifice? Which is like, okay, Barbara, if you fucking knew you were the god of sacrifice, like, what? Um, Barbara, like, doesn't really think. And the doctor then gets angry at Barbara, and Barbara's like, Please, let me change their religion it's the right thing to do. And I'm just like, okay. Um, and then she tells the doctor to just go away because she's a fragile woman and she's crying. And then suddenly they make up. Bloody woman. And then they suddenly make up and Barbara is the one that has to protect him. And it's great. Um, <clears throat> the priest asks about like what Barbara knows. And she's knows all these things, of course, because she's a teacher. And he's like, how many heavens are there? This, that, this. He's like, why are you asking me this? He's like, I want to know that you're not fake, blah, blah, blah. Um, fake ass fake. <laughs> and Barbara is then reminded that Ian is going to go fight that one guy to the death. And then we cut to Ian. Yes. And Ian talks about how he can win the fight with only his thumb. And he thinks Ian's mocking him. And so he goes to grab his weapon and Ian, like, Vulcan grips his neck and he passes out. And it's like, um, okay. Actually. Oh, are uh, you really going to, um, actually this? So in reality, the Vulcan neck pinch should really be called the Ian neck pinch. I will leave this podcast, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I am not here for Dude, this. Don't you want it to be called no. the Ian neck pinch, though? No! No! But I... Oh, that's right. You hate Ian. I forgot. I dislike Ian heavily, yes! I also dislike Star Trek, and I dislike being um actually about a Doctor Who episode with a Star Trek reference in a podcast about Doctor Who! Why do you hate Star Trek? I don't, oh, don't worry about it. We'll get to I it don't... in a few years. I don't like sci-fi. We'll get to that. Um... I mean, that's the whole fucking point of this. Yeah, that's the whole point. Is I don't like sci-fi. I like fantasy. You don't like fantasy. You like sci-fi. I don't like sci-fi. That's where this came from. Um, so, the priest and perfect victim, this is this guy's name, is the perfect victim. They only call him this. Well, there's no the. It's just perfect victim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, states that to have another meeting of Ian and victims, Mike just like gets taken away from him, like mid talking, and it's just like okay, so they're gonna have another fight, and the priest tells him that he's <laughs> going to destroy Ian entirely for honor and glory because that's the right thing to do. It <sighs> there's a lot of like weird audio issues in this, and it's just like all right, cool. So we. I mean, that if yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they had like a big studio. They didn't know how to use it perfectly, the first time. Well, no, it, it, you got to remember it's the '60s, and like, they hadn't fully like television. Still wasn't like a medium to to like produce and act in. It was still was a McDonald's before or like after the TV? Rules the rules weren't written. <laughs> 
They were kind of making it up as they went along. Dear. Thanks for ignoring me. I legitimately cannot. I, I didn't hear you. What did you say? Oh, I said, um, did McDonald's come before or after TV? In the UK or the US? <laughs> In the UK. But we've already been over this. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I'm not going over fucking McDonald's again. So the doctor McDonald's. is in the garden and he asks about the tomb and he's being really confused and wonders how the door could open even though it didn't open from the other side and his girlfriend states that she'll let him meet the builder's son of the tomb and the doctor just continues to hit on this lady. And then we cut to Barbara is being told... Her servants aren't allowed anywhere near the temple while her divinity is in question, which is kind of... Well, they're trying to... Go ahead. Latoxel is still doubtful about Barbara, so he's like, while we're questioning whether she is actually a god, no one's allowed with her. So, the thing that was weird about that to me is, like, you would have to have multiple people in on that to, like protect the temple so more people would have to know about it but they make this whole statement of like no only latoxel like questions this i mean that's why it falls apart and doesn't work yeah uh spoilers thanks Uh, oh shush so ick says apparently the builder's son and he says he'll meet the doctor in the garden so that he can make a plan so that the crew can destroy themselves and she goes off to tell the doctor this and susan Mm -hmm. has been studying the code of how to be a good housewife apparently and is also being told that she's going to be forced into a marriage and a very realistic jaguar clothed man comes in and talks to the doctor. And I didn't realize it was Ixt at the time. I didn't realize that he just put on his, his Jaguar. Um, so the doctor tells him that he will assist in figuring out how to beat Ian, even though he doesn't know that Ixta is fighting Ian, because Ixta leaves that part out. And in return, Ixta will tell him how to open the door. And then we see the doctor put a cactus needle through a leaf and start laughing maniacally, and it was kind of the weirdest juxtaposition <laughs> ever. <laughs> it was very bizarre. You have to admit his laugh is kind of like it, it, it's a good laugh. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to say adorable, but it, it's very unique. Yeah. So uh, we cut back to the evil high priest talking to Ian and asking why Ian gets tired because he's the servant of a god. Why should he get tired even though that's not how that works? And then Ian gets challenged to another fight. Toxel and Ixta start whispering about making Ian die and no one worries about it even though Barbara said that no one was going to die in the fight. We see Barbara and the High Priest of Knowledge talking about how sacrifice is bad, and she prophesizes their doom, literally, like, trying to destroy time travel shit and changing history. And then she walks away and wistfully leans on a chair. Legitimately. Yep. And I was just like, all right, that that was not necessary, but good for you, I guess. Lean on things if you if you feel like it. So, the doctor had apparently given Ixta a cactus needle that makes its enemies slower over time. And the priests are, like, obviously plotting together. And then the doctor comes to talk about Barbara, but talk to Barbara about how he Barbara. he needs to let a warrior win a fight. And they're like, wait, what fight? That fight with Ian? Oh, no. And then the doctor's captured because he wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. Um, and the doctor's like, oh no, what have I done? I have to fix this. Oh no, I'm captured. What have I done? Oh, I need no. to fix this. <laughs> I need to fix this. I need to fix this. Um, so then the doctor's captured. Barbara tells knowledge priest that the fight is a, is a lot and the fight needs to 
be set though so that no one dies because he just she just decided that and he will f- says he'll go okay I'll go like get the doctor released because you told me to um so the fight between mm-hmm. Ian and Ixta starts and everyone is bowing a whole lot to each other and then they start the contest and it's very so it's 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 so intense it is the most intense fight I have ever seen in my entire life yeah how did you feel during that fight i mean i was tense i was so i I was i was scared oh man that that part where they kind of like slapped at each other a little bit so scary yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i i mean what's more terrifying um i mean i mean i will say when he like sort of silently went <gasps> and like lunged at Ixta a little bit that like my heart jumped. What well, what was your was your favorite part when when the doctor came in and grabbed Ian and was like don't get scratched by him hereby distracting Ian and letting him get scratched by Ixta? Yes. Honestly, that was like the most tense part in in the entire entire bit. And then Ian like yeah. gets real wobbly, of course, and of course brings it Right up to the camera so that everybody can see that he cut his wrist open. <laughs> um, well, if he doesn't, then then how will the audience know? How will the audience know? Um, Ian is using, like, really basic self-defense moves that we were taught in self-defense at the YMCA when you were, like, eight sort of thing. Uh, like the whole, oh, you've grabbed my shoulder, I now grab your arm and then twist it. And it's like, okay, cool. Oh, man. It's it's so funny you say that because that's that is like that is an integral part of the plot of the very final episode oh, of the classic series. Jesus. Which part? The self defense or Ian just fighting? The self defense classes. Oh. Um, the, at, at a local YMCA. Like I mean, okay. <laughs> we'll get to it. We'll get to it in a few we'll get to it in a few years, but that episode is all about y- survival. Y- of the YMCB. Y- YMCB. It, it, it's it's all about survival of the fittest and like uh, fighting ideologies of uh, uh, the machismo sort of only the strong shall survive versus sort of oh, so hey Hunger we Games actually got need it. to look out for each other like the very late eighty sort of individualism versus sort of you know banding together as a group to making the world a better place. You mean communism um, versus yeah, well, America? Sure, um, <laughs> whatever. I fucking god damn it. <laughs> what? Talk to an American about the concept of individual. No, I know. I'm I'm make I'm making a fucking joke here. <sighs> I am literally on your side with how much I literally hate mm-hmm. everything. Come on. Uh-huh. Fine. Uh-huh. Fine. Uh-huh. Fine. Uh-huh. See if I ever fucking okay. take you to Waterburger again. Oh uh, no. <laughs> okay, anyway. So um so, so Ian loses like, the fight. I, All right. Yes. Um, and Ix is just like, I want to kill him. I want, I want to kill him. And they him. put him onto a table, and he has a knife. And then Barbara suddenly came down to see the fight, and she's like, "No, I'm loyal to those who serve me," and walks up and is told like to save Ian or some shit. And then he like leaves. So, and then that was the episode. <laughs> yeah. So, so um. Uh, you'll you'll note that uh, Susan's kind of absent in this episode and the next episode. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said she's, previously, in she's season learning Manus, to be a good wife. She's on fucking holidays, dear. Uh-huh. Um, That's what you do to be a good wife. The the, the cast <laughs> the cast basically take turns as to like who's going to take back seat this episode so they can go on a holiday. Um, Keys Marinus, it was the Doctor, mm-hmm. and uh, the Aztecs, it's um. Susan. No. Oh. Is Barbara next? Uh, other... I can't remember. I think Ian's next. Uh, I forget. I honestly haven't seen the censor. Of the course in a long the woman time. gets last. Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> Susan was second. <laughs> I hate you so much. I know. Much. I know you do. And that's that's the whole that's the whole <sighs> point. <sighs> You're right there. Third episode, come on. Okay, fine. Let's go. Um, so, The Bride let's, of Sacrifice. We cut back to Barbara making shit stop, and she's like, she's, I'm loyal to those who serve me. 
and she threatens to kill the high priest if Ian dies. So does he, and then thus saving him, and Ixtim can't claim the victory because he cheated, but also he did claim the victory. It, He's a it it's kind of it's kind of blurry as to who claims what. It's very it's a lot. Um, wow, now you're saying there's blurred lines? Okay, yes. Okay, Robin Thicke. Oh, wow. Wow. What is this, 2015? I wish it was 2015. I wish it wasn't. <laughs> I don't fucking want to live through the last five years again, I mean, do you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, mm. uh, so, they're kind of confused as to why the plant is what the doctor gave him and is super and Ix is super angry that he wasn't able to kill Ian and the angry. and the knowledge priest and Barbara are talking about how the next sacrifice is at an eclipse and all this bullshit and how of course they're going to make the sacrifice during the eclipse to make it bright again because that's how sacrifices work. They had no other meaning whatsoever. Um I, Oh come on. They 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 sort of phrase it like that towards Barbara. Like, no, like, this is just, like, all a I ruse. Guess. And I'm like, that's not what those were. No, no, it's it's more it's more in Barbara's mind it was a ruse. Yeah. It, in, in her mind, it's solidified that it's a ruse, but it's very... It, it, they kind of put forward that it is the Aztecs' belief that it is the the sacrifices that does make the changes and make the mm-hmm. difference. It makes it um, rain. It makes the sun come back out from an eclipse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, obviously, the show does kind of lean towards like Barbara's point of view, being like, oh, "Yeah, of hey, course." Like the the rain would have come if you sacrificed him or not. But at the same time, it, it doesn't then go. So human sacrifice is evil and immoral, and you should all stop it right now. Um, it, it just kind of lets Barbara say that. Yeah. It's not the story itself, it's just Barbara doing it. But that's still, it's yeah. still kind of hard to palette when she's basically the main character of this episode. So uh, while the story oh, yeah. isn't really telling us that it's hard when the main character is does that make sense yeah that's true okay well so uh laxative and the doctor are talking in the flower garden and he talks about how he will be proving that barbara is a fraud which feels weird um and then we come back to ian and ixta hanging out and Ixta is looking at a knife, and he admits that the doctor helps helped him. And Ian's coming, too, because he apparently passed out from the plant. And then Ian clears it up instantly, goes, oh, did he, did you know if you, he was fighting? Or that did he know that you were fighting me? And he goes, no. And it's like, well, then there you go. Sub- circumventing so much drama, and it made me so happy. Holy fuck. <laughs> <sighs> like, okay. When Doctor Who's lazy, they do fall into that trap of drama for drama's sake. Mm-hmm. But when they're when they're when they're on their game, yeah. they avoid that shit like that play. There's so much more interesting stuff happening that I'm glad that they just dropped it. Yep. Um so Ix mentions that the next time he sees Ian that he'll kill him. And then the priest wants the drawings of the tomb, but apparently there are none, and his dad died with the idea of how to get in the tomb, so everyone's fucked. He also wants someone to help him poison Barbara to see if they're a real god or not. And then we cut to... Are you a god? Then we cut to the lady that the doctor likes is talking about how she wants the doctor to make a love potion for her. And here's side plot C. Uh, Apparently, every (laughs) building is apparently covered with symbols to Yataxa, Yataxa and... She then suddenly accidentally spills cocoa beans all over the place. Oh, no, no, my And she's cocoa. like, no, my beans. And she's like, oh, I'll help. I know what these are. These are cocoa beans. These make a great drink. I'll make it for us. And she's like, really? And literally, they drink the drink together, and the doctor's an idiot, and they're engaged. That's, yeah. that's the subplot. 
Well, I, I, my favorite part is like, yes, I accept. I'll, 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 I'll accept your proposal of love, and then the camera like moves in, and the doctor very clearly yeah. just like a what? what? Yeah, it's it's very comical, yes. but I I love it because of it. Um, uh, fun fact about that: uh, they the cameras they had for filming this episode did not have the capabilities to zoom, so they just uh, ran so the, camera the camera up zooms to them. In, the, the camera actually is moving in, which is why in one of those episodes, in one of the episodes where, like, you see the camera, like, jolt a little bit yeah. as it's moving in, it's because it accidentally ran over a bit of scene. Well, there was the part earlier where the doctor missed his mark, so the camera had to, like, back up. <laughs> yeah, the doctor moves too far forward to the point where uh, he's actually framed right behind uh, Barbara's headdress, so he's completely blocked by it, so the camera had to move slightly yeah. <laughs> so you could see him in frame again. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so, they take the... Vanilla and Toxel are, in, it, are fighting against Barbara. They're the ones wanting to make the poison. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Tanilla or something. I'm not sure. Tanilla, yes. So Tanilla. Vanilla and Toxel are trying to fight against her. Ian informs her and she's like, well, I keep trying to see that everyone is good except that one guy. But in reality, the priest of knowledge is actually the only weird one. And Ian talks about how that is the only priest that is civilized. And I just like, oh. Yeah, there it was. Yeah. I, ooh. The English jumped out of Ian yeah. in that scene. The inner, the inner English empire. Uh, hashtag abolish Ian. So we oh, we it. hear some people coming, and so Ian decides to hide against a wall because peripheral vision isn't a thing, and he needs to be quiet. And so they offer Barbara this drink to be like, we want to be friends. And Barbara's like, all right, well, we'll be friends, but do me a favor, you drink this first. I knew it was poison, and then literally just throws it on the ground. Um, and then Barbara <laughs> literally tells the dude, yeah, no, I'm not a god. Like, to his face. Like, the one man that is against her, she tells him, I'm not a god. She, and then proceeds- well, She literally does, like, the, the Bill Murray thing of, like, goes up to him and says, no one will fucking believe yeah. you. She's like, if and you tell anyone, I will destroy you. And it's just like, okay, Calm down there, Satan. I, oh. So, at all this point, we all miss Ian's old coat. Because I, I really like his coat. I drew myself in his <sighs> coat for a reason. Honestly. It never comes back. Aww. Oh yeah, by the way, if you haven't seen it, there's a, a lo logo of sorts now. Wowie! Oh boy! Um, so, the doctor suddenly realizes that he's proposed to this lady... Because they were drinking cocoa milk or whatever. And the priests oh. decide to use Susan against Barbara and how they want to find her a real husband and shit. Because she said that she didn't want to marry anyone who it was not her choice. So they decide, okay, well, we'll use this to our advantage. And the perfect victim is presented to Susan. And he mentions that he wants to take her as a bride. Because he's allowed anything he wants in the last few days he's alive. And Susan's like, no, which obviously breaks the law. And then literally calls all of the Aztecs monsters. <laughs> and that... Yeah, not yeah. specifically the people trying to marry her. Literally she their culture. And the Aztecs are all monsters. And it's just like, okay... They're two strike two. Got it. Mm. She, yeah, she goes full white there, which uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we cut back to the doctor looking around the garden, and like you, get, at this point, you can kind of tell that the the set quality really has gone up a lot, because in the garden you see it the most. Uh, um. And they start to talk about how when the doctor marries this lady, they'll get a garden of their own and how all of this is so great and nothing at all is wrong. And she's so happy to be in love with him and all this stuff. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, that's something. Um, and then, 
Barbara forgives the priest that tried to poison her. And they bring Susan shit up to Barbara. And she says, okay, we'll punish her when the eclipse happens because that's how we're going to save her. And then apparently the doctor finds out that there's a tunnel in the garden to the tomb. And then Ian suddenly also learns that the doctor is engaged because the doctor came to tell him all this, of course. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of cuts in this episode that is just very much so like cut. Here's some information. Cut. Here's some information. It's just like okay. Uh, Potluck yeah, yeah. asks if they're going to stop sacrifices, and Barbara says yeah, but they're going to punish Susan first, and so they need to figure something out apparently to make it so that Susan doesn't get punished, and also Barbara can stop the sacrifice. And we cut to Ian yeah. sleeping next to that one guy as just bros. And he sneaks away. And of course, what's his face wakes up and grabs a knife and follows after him. We then cut to the doctor in the garden trying to figure out how to open the door to the tunnel. And Ian meets up with him. Being the stronger person, he tries the door and just kind of like barely moves it. And it's just a stone and whatever. And Ian goes into the (laughs) hole and the doctor gives him a flashlight to look around. And so the guy that woke up with Ian comes through the garden, goes, oh, that's weird that there is this rock out of place. We should put that back before it fills with water. Water. I didn't understand how it would fill with water, but it apparently was going to fill with water in flood the entire area but it's fine you got a problem with that yes oh okay why because <laughs> it where does the water come from he was just like it's just gonna fill uh, with water he very clearly said it comes from the lake what lake that's further down a few miles away it's fine that's not how that works that's not how gravity works stop uh, okay. okay so Oh. So they I, they put the rock back so that the garden doesn't flood and then we just kind of cut to Ian walking around and then gets all scared watching the water fill up the room and it's more so they just turned on a hose by his feet and then that was the end of the episode. Yeah. That I mean I mean yeah. It's that's probably the weakest part of the episode, really. Yeah, you don't say <laughs> the the water. Yeah, but it it's so it's so glossed over because it's such a minor part of it. Mm-hmm. It really is. Um, like if they, if they had anyway, mentioned it, like earlier, like they talked about how there was water for the plants, but they left it at that. If they had just made some mention of like the water builds up from the rain and waters all of our plants for us. And that's how we get water. There's tunnels throughout the mountain, whatever, you know, the water comes from the mountain. Who gives a fuck? Just give it like one more line of exposition and I'm good. Okay. Well, I'll give you, I'll give them your feedback. Okay. Thank you. Please fix it. Um, um, At Mr. BBC, please fix the original (laughs) Doctor Who episode so that I have one more line of exposition. And so stop Susan it, from screaming. Would it surprise you to know that this episode was uh, Jacqueline Hill's favorite to work on? This is uh, Barbara. Why? It because was, she it wasn't was in it? was her favorite episode to work on. Why? Because she wasn't what? in it? What, what do you mean? She was barely in it. Barbara, not Susan. Oh, Barbara. Sorry. Um, no, it does not surprise me, actually, because there's... There's a lot of scenes where she's like, I'm in power, sort of thing. <laughs> it, there are. <laughs> there legitimately are. So, I mean, I can... I, I, go I, ahead. Yeah, I guess. I, when, I you, guess you, when you put on a character, right, you, you become that character. It's the same for cosplay and so on. You start to enjoy working as that character because you're like, wow, I'm actually doing this thing that I could never do. And so for her to be a goddess stopping people from dying, 
among other things and being able to be like weighted on hand and foot like hell yeah that'd be awesome yeah 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 okay yeah i mean i guess it makes sense to me i just eh, i don't know when are you when are you gonna cosplay barbara in the aztec costume <laughs> Uh, I'll take that as as soon as possible. Mm. Let me let me know I, when I you're will... going to a convention game, and then I can come by, and you could dress up as a doctor, and I can be Susan. <laughs> you are not being Susan. I'm not being Susan. Why not? I'm I'm a twenty Ian something in, year old. You're gonna be Ian in in the dragon coat. <laughs> I'm a 20-something-year-old <laughs> playing a 15-year-old. It's fine. I'm young at heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, the idea of you playing a 15-year-old. That's even less believable. Well, than okay, Susan. no, because when I was 21, I got confused for a 12-year-old once. At a convention. By who, a pedophile? I don't know. It... It was like a group of people that are like, we're trying to figure out how old you are. And they're like, we think you're 15, but our friend thinks you're 12. And I'm like, I'm 21. What? 21. <laughs> Stop. Like, no. <laughs> uh, okay, the day of darkness. Jesus. Uh. Yes. Anyway, keep going. So honest- Episode four, we're nearly there. Yeah, so honestly, if Ian just pushed the rock over, because of how... Um, what's pivots basically work if you're trying to push something it is easier to push something at the top if it's very heavy to push it over just because when you're trying to move something that's extremely heavy if you it, it I don't remember exactly words are hard I can't science at 4 a.m. police no not pulleys are you talking about the not a pulley no it's not a pulley it, it literally has to do with being able to lift more from one angle than another. Oh, oh, yeah, the, the, um, the, the, oh, God. Uh, oh, I had it in my head. I know the concept you're talking yeah. about. It's a, it's a, a, a physics. Yeah. The, the power of physics. Yeah, it's physics. And, it's physics. Yeah. Just, it's fine. It's physics. The, the Aztecs invented physics. And. Yes, they did. It, they did. Um, if Ian literally just pushed this rock from the top, he could have easily just pushed it, but, you know, whatever. Um, and so he starts messing around the cave and finds a hole in the ceiling that he also crawls through, and there was also a rock on top of, but he has no issue moving as well. I'm not really sure why. Um, and he comes out, big gasp, in the tomb. Where the TARDIS was. Um, <laughs> and Ixta ref- like refuses to open the tunnel. And so the doctor thinks Ian's dead. And then suddenly Ian just like finds some old straps found in the tomb. Makes a sort of pulley system so that the door can stay open. Um, and comes out the tomb. And Barbara instantly finds like, Ian, wow, how'd you come from there? Or, no, she says, wow, you came from in there. Like, no shit, Barbara, where the fuck else did I just walk from? Like, what? I think you mean Eon. Eon. Yeah, that's how, what is it, Ixta says it all the time, like, Eon. It, I don't really know why Eon. they decided to give him that sort of, like, flourish, but whatever. Um, So, they have a way out, but Susan is being contained, and specifically, Ian gives him back his the doctor back his flashlight because the doctor had come up and was like, "No, Ian's dead." Oh no, wait, there he is. We're good. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> they yeah. they cut to Susan being told to sit down because Ixta is going to to protect her or guard her basically they say protect but it's it's more guard than anything and <clears throat> she's told that ian is dead and she's like no i don't believe you and suddenly ian's face pops up in the background like slowly inching towards them and it's hilarious and ian of course walks right back up to them and 
scares the fuck out of them, does another, like, Vulcan pinch thing, and Ix is on the ground. Uh, so they decide to just go home because they've already fucked up, like, so much stuff that they can't really d- get, get away with anything. And the rope breaks, so they can't open the door with even while using it at an angle. So who could have known that a weak tomb rope would have easily broken? Honestly, like, like seriously. I, I mean, right? God. Uh, the bad priest tells What's-His-Face to kill Potluck and use Ian's weapon so that Ian will be blamed. Ian decides to go back through the stone in the garden where Potluck will be killed. So I was like, yeah, they're obviously going to stop it. Um, and then Barbara mentions that all the people who died here seem to be waiting for her to die. I don't know where that came from. She just was kind of creeped out. I mean, wouldn't you be? (laughs) Uh, So Susan goes with Ian, and they find Potluck on the ground. And they find his weapon as well, and he's like, wow, this is a trap. Like, no shit. And then Potluck wakes up and everyone's caught and he's like, she's a false god. Like, this is bullshit at this point. Everyone thinks she's a false god. They. Yeah, she kind of fucked up. (laughs) Yeah. They kind of mentioned that they're going to trap Barbara by putting in her her in a room with three walls. And then a fourth wall will be added. And that's where they will put her. And then that's never the revisited wall again. Shall be solid. Yes. Uh, so we see the doctor making a pulley and doesn't mention what it is at all to his now fiance because I don't know. And the doctor is talking to his fiance about how shit's really fucked up and how as soon as this thing is done, like he's going to be leaving her and everything sucks. Uh, Potluck is with Barbara and still thinks that Ian is bad, but Potluck isn't sure what's fucked up. Uh, what the fuck is up? Sorry. And he doesn't even know if Barbara is a god, but he also, like, trusts her or something? I don't know. And uh, then we cut back to the doctor and he's made an entirely perfect pulley in the span of, like, ten minutes by carving some wood. Yeah. I, I, I don't, yeah. uh, Yeah. It, I mean, he's a master with a knife. Obviously. Have you seen him? He's so ripped. Yeah. He's he, so ripped. He, 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 he goes so fast. Mm-hmm. Camera comes back and wow, it's done. Yeah. So Toxel is really wanting like to destroy shit. And the doctor's girlfriend is like, don't worry. Like, we're all going to die. And like, this thing's done. So I'm going to miss you. And so she just leaves and Potluck comes to talk to her. And tells her to go take Susan up to Barbara by trading this medallion thing to the guard, which is a symbol for all of his worldly possessions, money, and house. I'm like, okay. And he's like, I'm going to go off into the woods. Okay. Uh, So, again, we cut to the doctor wrapping the chair with the shitty rope. And tells Barbara to order Susan and Ian released. And they're not really sure why that wouldn't work. And then they're kind of confused as to why Potluck went into the wilderness. Mm. Uh, Potluck's icon is given to the guard. But instead, Ian just knocks him out. And then they give him the thing anyway by putting it like under his hand. And they just leave. Uh, Ian takes, though, he takes his feathered helmet thing and just runs off. Um, Susan makes it back to the temple without issue, and the doctor wishes his fiance to stay safe, and then he just lets her go. Like, he doesn't take her with her, with with him, or anything. He's just like... With, with, with E. Yeah, and he's just like, just be safe. Bye. I literally am in love with you, but bye. (laughs) Um, I wish she had joined them. Jesus Christ, that would have been sick. It, it would have been so good. It would have been so good. I, I, but also, there's a problem, and it's a problem they come up with a future companion that we don't get to see because the episode that she's in uh, is 
missing. Do you um, want to explain that when we get came... to the end of this? They, they kind of well, maybe just give me a sec. It's it's literally a second. Um, they they'd come to a problem of uh, having someone who's so far back in history. They have a problem of every time they go somewhere, they have to explain basic concepts to them. Like, uh, these, this is an elevator. This is a car. Yeah. So it's like it added an extra challenge that they were like, "We're not gonna fucking bother with this. Let's not have companions from that far ago." Yeah. Uh, we'll have companions from the far future instead. I mean, there's like a very good Deus Ex Machina that could fix that. It's like, here, take this. It will. Teach you all the things you need to know to continue our adventures together. Sort of shit. I don't know. So at least, like, they're on the same level as Ian and them. I don't know. Anyway, she should have come with them. Uh, What's-his-face kills the guard that let Ian go and takes his ornament like a jackass because they find him passed out. Um, Ian is very obviously, very, very obviously in the crew, uh, to do the entire sacrifice ceremony. Uh, he's the only one in the feathered hat at this point. And Susan, of course, yeah. will be pierced with thorns as punishment. And then the, suddenly the evil priest tries to kill Barbara. And Ian stops him. <gasps> and then it was Ian. It was Ian. Right. Because he was in the bird costume because he took the helmet. Wow. <gasps> Caca! Yeah, and 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 there's gonna be a fight, and so We're gonna fight. there's gonna be a fight. I fucking love that movie. Um, so of course Ixta is in his jaguar costume and Ian is in his bird, and these are so obviously not stunt doubles. And Ian wins the fight and literally commits murder for the second time in this show, and we really, really should abolish Ian. Um. Yeah. Well. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Ian commits murder. They all get into the door, and the eclipse starts, thus making us cut to some solar eclipse stock photos, really. And it was like one photo, and then another photo, and it was like, okay, I kind of see where you're going, but okay. Um, Toxel then stabs perfect sacrifice and everything as it goes down. You know, general Aztec stuff. Uh, Barbara is upset that she can't change anything and how she fucked up Potluck's life and ruined everything about him and how she couldn't change these people's entire culture in a day. Yes. Ugh. Um, and then... Listen, she's wise. The doctor, she did best. the doctor pretty much goes like, hey, like, you changed one person. Like, isn't that all that matters? And she's just like, yeah, I guess. It, it's not. It's not. He's just trying to make her feel better. Um, he is. He really is. And he thinks about putting a rock that he was given on the tomb that they're in, but goes, now keep it anyway for some reason, and then just gets in the TARDIS and they all leave. Um, so then we cut back to them whooshing through time and space, of course, and suddenly we cut to another scene of them whooshing through time and space, but they've stopped and they're confused because half of their controls say that they're moving still. And then the other half says that they're not moving and it's a mystery and they've apparently stopped, but they're also moving. And so they are probably on top of something or in something or have been bored or something like that. And it was called strangers in space. And that was it. Yeah. They, they could be inside something. What are the, ins- what do you think they're inside? What do you, what do you think is going to happen next episode? Uh, um, so they're inside something, but they're not. I, I'm i kind of worried that this is literally just Pinocchio, but... Pinocchio? Inside of How a whale. So? Oh, call me Ishmael. Yeah. Um, uh, no. No? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. I won't tell you what it is. Okay, um, hold on. But... The... The other thought is that they are on a planet of some sort that is moving extremely fast through the universe 
and hurtling towards its doom or something, or like on a comet or something that's moving very quickly. Yeah, yeah well, maybe. Maybe? I'm not going to tell you. Uh-huh. Okay, well, fuck. Um, I guess sorry. I have to tune in text. next week. What? Yes, you will. <laughs> anyway, the Aztecs. Uh huh. How do you? What do you? What do you think? How? What's your thoughts? I'm glad Barbara wasn't a little shit. I'm annoyed at general British people trying to be Aztecs. I'm happy that the writer tried their best and the costume designer tried their best, but also fuck Ian. I'm glad Susan didn't you scream. Really just, I'm really, really glad. Just don't like Ian, do you? No, I don't. I'm really, really glad Susan didn't scream this episode. Yeah, it's like one of the only episodes where she doesn't scream. Yeah, it was really refreshing. <laughs> Purely because she she was just on holiday. Yeah, it was really, really scream. refreshing. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to watch it again. It's kind of really just having to remember people's names and things was really frustrating. Because they would talk about, like, oh, well, potluck, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, who? Who was that again? Really? That was hard for you? A little bit, yeah. But also, uh, audio across Discord through screen share. And I also have an ear infection right now because I, I went swimming. And so... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So like trying to listen to things could hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. So... It's it's been a whole thing. I don't think I'd really want to watch the episode over again. I mean, I understand how it's some people's like, oh, this is so good, but like maybe not for me. Maybe not me. That's fair. Uh we're doing a scale of one to ten, so Yep. Uh four, five? Maybe a five? Okay, that's not too bad. That's um. It's not bad. It's not good, but it's not bad. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I, on, on the, that's interesting to hear, on, considering <laughs> some of the future episodes we're coming up against. On the scale of what I would like to rewatch, I feel like seven or above. I would want to rewatch. In this regard, at least. Okay, that's fair. That's that's a good. That's a good. Uh, uh, that's a good way to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't know if you'll like the next episode. Uh -huh. um, I like it, but I remember I seem to remember sort of it being a little bit of a drag in some areas. Mm. Um, I I I mean I I know instantly you're not going to like it. Because I mean, when I tell you how many episodes it is, uh, um, is it ten? It's six. It's why do you keep thinking ten? There's I, only two episodes <laughs> with ten episodes. Because I keep and we're only watching one of them, and that's because like I two keep years down I the keep line. expecting it to come up, and I keep just not wanting to be any part of it. The ten episode one is like one of the last second Doctor episodes, uh -huh. so we don't get for it for a very very long time. Okay, um, like maybe maybe. Maybe April next year. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know. I just... There's only a few things that make me not want to watch episodes of something, and one of the big ones... Dragging, not so much. Drama for the sake of drama pisses me off so much. Like, situations well, where you could very yeah. easily be like, oh, I'm going to explain this, and it takes two more seconds to explain what I actually mean to you, and then you're not angry at me. But instead, I'm going to explain not that, and then you're angry at me for, like, a good five hours of the rest of this movie. Yeah. Would it would it help if I told you the next one also involves a political struggle? No. <laughs> Is it a two-sided political struggle or a multiple-sided? This is the 60s, so it's uh, two-sided. Um, you, you, something you've got to remember. With Doctor Who, know, there's political. a lot of political struggle episodes. They're, they're, it's very political. Yeah, it is. Um, it just There are some, some uh, great scenes, though, in the next one, and the costumes are pretty hilarious. What bothers me isn't when something is political. It's more so when you're told to take a side in something. 
It's just like, no, there it's more than black and white in a lot of cases. But shows like uh, to very yeah, much it is black and white, because there's no color television. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um so I I don't mind political, but I don't like when everything is black and white and you have to choose between good and evil or side A versus side B when side B is very obviously evil in the Doctor Who universe. And it's just like, "Mm -hmm. all right, cool. Yeah. Also, I was wrong. It's uh, Barbara who has the holiday next. Oh. Not Ian. I think Ian has the holiday during the French Revolution one. Oh, fun. Yeah. So anyway, uh, five. What'd you say? Five out of ten. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So five out of ten then, mm-hmm. and uh, I guess the, yeah, we'll see next week for the sensorites, and hopefully our audio is better this time around. If it isn't, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> Sorry, we're trying. We're nearly at the we're nearly at the end of season one though. Yeah. Congrats! Uh, there's the censorites, then the uh, the French Revolution, mm-hmm. and well, it's not the French Revolution; it's the Reign of Terror. Oh, um, but it's interesting. It's it that's like a real historical one, uh, another real historical one with like actual characters and stuff. Yeah, like <laughs> actual characters, actual <laughs> historical people, like Robespierre and shit. No actual characters. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, yeah, we'll see you next week for the censorites, ah. and hopefully, dear doesn't hate it. Uh, probably. It's, it's, it's intrigue, aliens, intrigue, aliens, mystery, okay. political intrigue. Good, 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 goodbye. Bye. Go to McDonald's. Don't go. Don't, we're not fucking <laughs> sponsored by McDonald's. We could be. I don't want to be sponsored by McDonald's. Fair. Do you? No, not really. Exactly. But also, I would. So I would like that. Apolo- I would, I, tell people to not go to McDonald's. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't go to McDonald's. That's right. Go to KFC instead. Yeah, or Whataburger. Well, actually, yeah. You know what? Fuck it. Go to Whataburger. Go to Whataburger. Uh, I expect you all to go to Whataburger. By Whataburger. The time if you're episode. listening to this, please. I live in Texas. I will happily be sponsored by Whataburger. Hey, Whataburger, can you open up a, a, a restaurant in Brisbane, in Australia, specifically? For me? Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Bye, and uh, let's hope uh, Whataburger gets back to us. Bye. Bye.